All right, welcome back to a new touch designer tutorial. And in this one, we're going to look at how to create this illusion of moving through an infinite space. And um, yeah, we're gonna build this uh, rather complex project here in the next half an hour. Um, but the, the technique is really quite simple. So just skip to that if you just wanna see, uh, see the technique. Um, this is really quite the versatile technique, so we're going to use instancing here and um, if you're generally working with texture instancing, so top instancing, um, then, then, you, then, then there's many ways how you can apply this. So this is just one way and um, I think there's also some other cool tricks for you to learn in here. So yeah, let's just dive into it. Um, just one thing I want to show you, two things I want to show you. Uh, one thing is like you can easily change the camera here so to make this look quite interesting actually <clears throat> and the other thing is you we can also do some post-processing just so you can see how you can apply this sort of thing so this is using the comic look from my other tutorial and just some inversion and edging right there okay so let's get started so as usual I'm just going to go ahead and delete everything I'm going to start with the pillars and the arches. So um, I'm going to make a little base here, base component. And by pressing C, I can now color it. And I'm going to call this pillar and move in here. And this is a bit uh, tricky or like uh, hacky, but um, I, I think it's a nice way to create these pillars. So I'm going to create a super quad and drop that in here and uh, just give it 100 and rows and columns and change the xy uh, exponent to 1.5 and the z component to 0. And now we get this sort of, I don't know how you call that shape. <laughs> we get a shape. And I'm going to use a copy sop and um, copy it three times and change the rotation to like 60. Now we get this sort of look. Of course, you can feel free to like mess around with the exponent here. So that might be even better here. I don't know. Feel free as usual and generally. <laughs> All right, let's add a transform. And I'm going to make the scale Y here a bit, uh, four times bigger. So we get like this long pillar. And then I'm going to add a merge and a transform and an out. So we can like send that out here. Okay, um, right, so what I'm going to do is create, uh, like right now we just have our pillar, but we don't really have end caps, and we don't really have a beautiful ending. It just looks kind of lame or odd. So I'm going to add a tube. And on this tube, I'm going to uh, change the center uh, to 4.1. Just trust me on these, and I'm <laughs> going to change the height here to actually 1.15 uh, and the radius to 1.3. And if we now look in here, we now have our little thing there. And I also want to go to detail and turn on the end caps here. So, um, right, if we now look in here, we have our nice uh, little end cap and I want to have a smaller one underneath. So I'm going to like copy and paste this. I'll also put that in here. And I'm going to uh, change the height to 0.1 and the radius to like point, uh, I don't know, one five. And the center to four. So now we have a smaller little end cap there, which is nice. Might even want to go down with the radius a bit. And oh, the radius is fine. Maybe I want to go down with the height a bit. I don't know. Let's just leave it that way. What I'm going to do now is uh, copy and paste these, put those in here. And uh, now let's just change this to a minus. So we're just putting it on the other side, on the other end. And uh, now we have one top and one bottom end. So this looks like a knight's Roman or a Greek pillar. I have no idea. <laughs> okay, nice. So let's now just go ahead and make this smaller. I don't want to have it that big for the instancing part. And uh, now I just figured out uh, a little number here to make this fit on zero like to be, you know, so the the bottom part is on, on zero, or approximately uh, is 0.465. So just maybe just type in that number, and then it's like on zero, basically. Cool. So that's the pillar. 
let's move on to the arches. Uh, actually, I'm just going to add a geo from here and uh, call this pillars. And just copy both. And call it call. Oh, Jesus, why does it happens every time? Um, call this arches. And this one arch. Let's move in here and delete all of this. And again, we're going to build uh, a something here in SOPs. So I'm going to add a box and a tube. And we're going to use a little trick to like um, subtract one from the other. So I'm going to shape this box and give it a size of 0 0.1, 0 0.5 and 2.5. Now we have like a box that's going to sort of stretching in, in the Z uh, direction. And um, the tube, I'm going to also add, uh, also add end caps. It's quite important. Change the connect uh, the primitive type to polygon, and um, the orientation to x axis. Then I'm going to add a transform here, and we we'll want to like change the uh, the translation here. But I'm going to show you that in a second actually, because we want to see what we're doing. So I'm going to add a boolean sop from here. So we're going to pipe in the, this box into the first input and this one in the second input. And now you can see we, we get a union of both, sort of like the merge. But um, I think the uh, the wireframe is probably going to, I don't know. Anyways, what we want to change here is the operation to A minus B. So A is our box, B is our tube, so A minus B. So basically now we have cut off the second shape from the first. Now all we need to do to make this an arch, arch and not like this weird shape is to scale the, the um, tube. So let's go ahead and uh, actually move this down by point minus 0 0.5. Let's, let's change the scale here to 0 0.5 and this scale to 1.25. So we're like scratch, stretching it a bit to left and right. And we still have our, have our out here or just create a new one. And yeah, if we now look here, we have a nice little arch. And of course, you can go ahead and shape this in any way you like. And um, right, so we have a pillar and an arch set up. That's, uh, that's nice. Let's now look at the render setup. Cool, so what we need for that is a uh, camera, as usual. I'm gonna make this blue because the camera is you know, an important object. Let's also turn off all these viewers. We're also gonna need a light, and we're gonna add a second light later. And I'm just gonna make this like turn this a bit so we can like we we see. So it's not the same as the camera basically. Then I'm gonna add two nulls, <coughs> null comms. Just copy this. I'm gonna call the first one constraint. I'm gonna call the second one look at. And I've just recently noticed how powerful it is to work with the combination of both. So just select the camera and drag the corresponding ones onto here. Constraint to look at. And uh, <coughs> let's just give these colors, like yellow maybe, yellow and orange or something. <coughs> My voice is dying. Mm -hmm. And what we also want to add here is a render top, of course. And uh, let's go and change our render resolution to whatever you want. And let's go ahead and add a null by pressing Alt N or, you know, any other way. And uh, an RGB key. Let's turn this on the display. And uh, now we see a, an arch and a pillar. Let's just uh, go ahead and not render the arch for now. We're just concerned <laughs> about the pillars. Let's go to our constraint because now if we want to change something about the camera, Let's not do that here in the camera, except for changing this to one. <laughs> uh, and um, <clears throat> like, if you want to change the position, uh, like Y and on X, it makes more sense now to use the constraint. So we can like go up. And as you can see, we're like looking down now. That's because our look at is at zero. Let's change our look at Z to like minus 40 or 30 or something. And now we're like looking into like looking to a point that's like sort of far away. Okay, now we still have our big pillar here in front of us. <clears throat> so, um, right, one last thing I might want to show you is here is to change the FOV angle. You can change that to like 60 or 70 even. 
and uh, that's gonna look a bit better later on. So, all right, that's it for the render setup. Let's now look at the instancing part. So I'm going to create a ramp here. That's our base for the instancing. And I'm gonna call it TX and give it a color of red. And I'm gonna go to its common page, change the uh, pixel format to 32-bit float and the resolution to two by 20. And the viewer smoothness to nearest pixel. So if we right click in here and display the pixel values, we can now see we have, we have like um, a lot of pixels here. 40 to be exact, <laughs> two by two times 20. And um, though these have values of like 0.25 and 0.75. So what are, we, what are we doing here? We're creating, we wanna create like two columns of pillars basically, each having this amount of pillars each. So in this case, 20. And we just wanna have like a left and a right column. So we have like a left and a right. So like two rows of pixels basically. But um, our value here is a bit off, so 0 0.25 and 0.75. So let's go ahead and add a limit here. And um, again, let's display the pixel values. It also makes sure that, that you know the viewer smoothness is different. Let's go to our quantize page, change this to round and set it to one. And now we have a nice value between zero and one. Let us now add a math here. And again, let's display the pixel values. You can also just press D actually, it's so much faster. <laughs> Never stop learning. And uh, add a reorder. And again, oops, make it act active, press D. And um, <clears throat> right, so all good. And let's now uh, add a second RAM from here, pressing the middle mouse button. And um, again, we have like these values, but let's change this to vertical. So now we have values between roughly zero and one going on the Y axis. Uh, but this is gonna be, this, we're gonna use this for the Z. So we're like wanna position them one after the other going away from our camera. And uh, yeah, that's what we're doing with this. So we can now again add a math. And Let's change our range here to minus 50 and zero. So the nearest one is at zero and the furthest pillar uh, away from us is minus at minus 50 at, uh, Z. So let's pipe that into here and change the input just to input two. Now it looks a bit weird, but that's, that's only okay. Don't worry about that. And let's just add a null here and call this pause PA for position pillar and arch. All right, let's also go to our math here and change this to minus one and one because we wanna have the pillars at the left and the right side. I'm gonna see that in a second now. So let's go to our geo here, turn on instancing and put that onto the translate OP. Use R as an X and G as a Z value. And now we can see this is working pretty nicely. We get, a, we get the pillars on the left and right and they're moving away from us so if we turn off the uh, math then we can see what's happening here so or we can sort of see what's happening it's kind of hard to see <laughs> because they're all now at, like one point so now we're like stretching them back into the z direction and now we're like stretching them or like positioning them left and right from the camera i want to do the same thing with the arches so i'm going to like render them go to our geo here turn instancing on and drag this on here use r and uh, no, G. And you can see they're kind of uh, at the bottom, so they're not positioned correctly. So we need to change that. I found out the correct value for this is roughly 1.085. And we also need to like, you can see they're not, you know, the, the center of the arch is in the center of the pillar, but we wanna shift that. So let's just uh, shift that by 1.25. That's basically, you know, no, I don't, I don't actually, I can't really explain why 1.25, but it works. So, um, ah, no, I, I can, because this is uh, 2.5 long. It's actually, we can also just copy this parameter and 
pass the reference here and divide this by two. That would also work. Okay, so now we have positioned that nicely. Let us add a floor and then move to the next uh, section. So I'm gonna add a rectangle here. A geo. Let's just call this floor. And I'm gonna change the rectangle to be on the ZX plane. And I'm gonna change the uniform scale to 100. If you don't see this, it might be because of your light is not positioned correctly. So that's why I kind of like pushed it up in the beginning. Okay. Let us now make this a bit prettier. So we're gonna add, uh, we're gonna look here to the camera and go to settings and change the fog to squared exponential. And it's gonna look very strange in the beginning and it's gonna look even stranger now. Just adding, making this white and adding this to one. It's all white, but now we can go down with this and we're gonna see nice. This is <laughs> nice. This is being created. So I'm gonna set this to like, I don't know, 0 0.07. And um, yeah, just play around with that value. I think it, uh, yeah, that really makes it, you know, if you don't have fog, it looks very strange. You can also make this black though, um, but I really like the white look in, in here like a vintage CGI heaven. <laughs> and um, right, so what I also want to do here is add a PBR. And I'm going to change the emit here to like 0.5, I'm all free, and uh, change the roughness to like 0.7. And now I can use this on the floor and on the uh, arches. And this is already looking a bit better. And uh, to not make these look as much floaty is now, as floaty is now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and just add a second light, make this active, add some shadows, and I don't want to have them come from behind, but like uh, from the front. So I'm going to move the light away quite a bit. Whoops, not too far, of course. Let's just tr try to find the right um, spot there. You're gonna gonna see the problem with uh, shadows. Uh, let's try to make them a bit higher resolution, and we can also go up here with the shadow softness. It still doesn't look uh, that great. That's just uh, the way shadows are in Touch Designer, unfortunately. I think uh, this this should work quite well. Okay, and um, right, I think that's that's actually fine. Let us now look at how to uh, actually make this move because uh, why why did we do the whole ramp business here if we if we didn't um, if we don't you know why didn't we why didn't we just use a, a grid for this? That's because we have this phase parameter and that's really really powerful because that can create this illusion of making it uh, move through space. So now we can a create this abs time dot seconds times point zero or times 0.1 and then it moves away from us and if we now add a minus it moves towards us so now that looks really uh, cool we can and of course if you like increase this number then it's it goes faster and if you go really high and it's not going to look like it's moving anymore but then you could for example go down with the amount of pillars and it just goes nuts and so i i don't know i like um, 0.15 I think is good. Cool. So let us now look at how to create uh, the landscape on the left and right here. So we're going to do that again with instancing and we're going to use a noise as a base. I'm going to change the noise to like period to like 0.2. Go to the comment page or also change this to 32-bit um, float. RGB and I want to have like a resolution of 200 by 200 for now. Then I'm going to add a RAM from here. Change it, yeah, make sure this is RGB. Change it to red and the same here with green. Vertical. Add a math for both of these. And um, from the first one, let's add a reorder. Pipe in the second one here and the noise into the third one. And then um, change the input to 2 and 3. And now it should look something like this. 
Now we can add a null and call this land scape <laughs> inst for instancing. And let's now add a box here, box up. And I'm going to add a transform from here. Change the scale X to 0 0.05 and the scale Y, uh, scale Z as well. And now I also want to push this uh, up to be on zero. So I'm going to change the center to 0.5. And now we have our, I don't know, what, what is it called? Box, I guess. <laughs> um, well, I'm going to add a geo from here and call this landscape. And turn the viewer off. And turn instancing on. And use this on the default instance OP now because we also want to use scale. And use R. Yeah, it's going to sort of break. I'm going to pause this quickly. Um, okay, so make sure you actually change these before because that's, that's quite important. So let us change the range here to minus 20 and 20. 20. Oh boy. And uh, this one, well, like the, y, uh, the Z, we want to have the same as here. So let's just uh, go to our math two and copy this. We can actually just copy the whole thing and just pass the reference in here. Okay, now this is still looking very strange. That's because we haven't actually used uh, G. It's still looking very strange. Let's uh, also use B as a scale Y. And now this looks amazing, right? <laughs> um, yeah, the thing is, of course, we have sort of created a grid um, with boxes, and this grid is also going like over this archway. So now we we'll want to make sure that it doesn't. So let's go ahead and add a rectangle from here, which we're then going to composite composite over there. So let's uh, add the size here to, to two and to like one point one five. Let's add a uh, blur here. Change this to like. 15 and let's add a composite and just change this to like subtract and uh, I think actually I, I like the other way better which is changing this to multiply changing the full color to black the background color to white and then pushing it all the way up that works a bit better so yeah cool so now uh, our archway is free of landscape or boxes um cool 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 right let's go to our noise now and uh, give it some color and uh no i actually wanted to go to the ramp <laughs> that wasn't what i wanted to do um let us go to our ramp here let's also give that a color and copy this uh, phase expression copy the parameter go back here and past the reference here and now it's like uh, the landscape is also moving towards us. And I want to divide this by two. And it gives this kind of parallax effect so that the landscape to the left and right is moving slower. And it looks a bit more interesting or realistic. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's basically it. So we can also give the landscape our PBR material so it's a bit brighter. We could, of course, also give the pillars the material, but uh, then it's, I don't know, everything kind of looks the same. So I like to make that different. We can change our light here. I don't know. Yeah, so now you're, of course, free to play around with this. You could even do free pillars. No, that doesn't actually work. Um, we, you, you can change the noise here. I like it to be very small. But you can also go with like a big landscape here. You can also add a math and uh, just multiply this by two, for example, to like make it a bit bigger. Or, uh, you know, just change the range to like, I don't know, point, no, that, no, screw that. <laughs> uh, to like, yeah, just multiply it. And um, <clears throat> yeah, you can change the, the noise in every, any way you want. Um, and yeah, change the speed here of the phase. And uh, generally, you can input completely different um, SOPs here. So this is just one, as I, the, as I said in the beginning, this is just one application for this. Um, and there, there's many, many ways how you could 
Uh, you could also like, you know, input spheres. You could also, for example, use spheres here, but it's gonna look a bit odd. And uh, it's also kind of slow, but you can like go down with this, for example, and then put that in here. I mean, it looks interesting, it's not too bad. So you can, you can do that. Don't go too high with these. So it's gonna get very slow at some point. Um, and yeah, the other thing is that I wanted to show you with the camera. In the beginning, I showed you that already. So you can change the FOV. That's really, really interesting. Um, and of course, you can play around with the fog. It also looks really nice. All right, let's actually just keep it at like 0.1. I like that. And uh, now I'm going to add a switch here and a uh, level and an edge and um, just put these in here and also I made this uh, comic look from my that I briefly said in the beginning um, that is from my other tutorial about how to create that uh, and I just put that into a base and just so it's re reusable and now uh, on the level we can now change the invert and now if we change the switch here, we have like an invert. It also looks really cool, I think. Um, and also with the edge, it also looks really nice. So if you don't have the RGB key, it's going to be alpha. So make sure you have some kind of background here. And um, if we go further, the comic looks looks like this. So it's very, very different. I just changed a few things here. Uh, you can get rid of the blur or just make the blur smaller. Um, or, you know, change the colors, stuff like that. Okay, so um, just gonna, yeah, <laughs> uh, right. One last thing, <laughs> you can change the uh, position here of the. Okay, that's actually kind of broken. So the floor, if that's uh, if the, f no, if the landscape is sort of broken like this, then go to the X form and just move it down, very slightly, and then you get rid of those glitches. And uh, now we can like move up the constraint here and uh, I don't know, move right or left. And we can also go ahead and change the fog to be something smaller, something like that. And now we're like uh, flying over the whole thing. So it's also really cool. Right, so uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, kind of messy tutorial, I felt like. And um, yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I I see you on the next video, I guess. And if you want to support me, uh, I have a Patreon, uh, so you can check that out uh, for other videos and files. And yeah, hope you're well, and see you.